the economy and a bet on development through the arts. Last month, economics correspondent Paul Salman took us to New Mexico, where state and local officials are betting on entrepreneurship to fashion an economic comeback. Tonight, a short follow-up from the land of enchantment, a venture unlike anything Paul has seen before. It's part of his weekly series, Making Sense. New Mexico's economy tumbled head over heels during the crash of 08 and is pretty much frozen for the decade since it hit bottom. So this is the house of eternal return. Return on investment? <laughs> well, maybe. Hello, and welcome to our house. And maybe even a small step towards the return of the New Mexico economy, says CEO Vince Cadlubeck. Something melted or something. Yes. If that is, this mystery fun house filled with portals to other space-time dimensions should realize its ambition of becoming the next big thing in immersive entertainment following the lead of the Rain Room at New York's Museum of Modern Art, say, Toronto's lost and found escape room, or the Crystal Universe in Singapore. Perfectly expresses the type of immersive artwork that is becoming wildly popular around the country. You know, uh -huh. instead, of, instead of walking up to a painting, you actually let audiences walk inside of the painting. But here in Santa Fe, it's immersion with a plot. Opened in March of 2016, the House of Eternal Return is already a business sensation. It needed 125,000 paying customers at up to $20 a pop to break even on operating expenses in year one. Instead, it drew 400,000, taking in nearly $7 million. Its profits alone covering most of the original investment. We're in the closet. The paying visitors are the sleuths scanning notes and diaries scattered amidst the maze. So here's one of the portals that ripped through the, uh, the fireplace. We're going through the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I play tennis all the time. Which leads to the skeleton of a musical mastodon. But can this techno netherworld really do anything to revive a state like New Mexico, whose economy keeps losing its best and brightest to the coasts? Well. Here are jobs robots can't compete with. A hippie artist collective called Meow Wolf that became a business convinced Game of Thrones creator George R.R. R. Martin to buy a defunct bowling alley and lease it to them and converted it into, well, something hard to describe or sometimes even to see. So this is the laser harp. And this is sort of the ethereal zone that um, is in between life and death. There's no map, no GPS. Just room after room of you figure it out fantasy. So here's that aquarium that you were in, that you saw inside the house, and now you're inside of it. But this is this is like virtual reality, except it's actual reality. It's right. It's actual. <laughs> it's virtually actual reality. This is artwork designed and crafted by more than 150 artists. Many of them millennials, like the 35-year-old CEO, who started off as an artist himself, switched to deal maker. I learned some basic business aspects and I figured out what debt meant and I figured out um, <laughs> Did that come to, as a shock? <laughs> uh, how to it was amazing to me. Like I grew up thinking that debt was this big evil thing, you know, that yeah. our whole generation does. It's like you fall into debt and you, you spend the rest of your life trying to get out uh -huh, of it and, uh -huh. that, and stay away from debt. And when I realized what debt actually was, that somebody was willing to lend me money to build something incredible that would end up paying them back plus a little bit of a return. Uh -huh. And I like crunched the numbers. It's like, oh, yeah, this makes total sense. Take me to the Galactic Center. Woo! So they borrowed one and a half million dollars, have created about 200 jobs so far, and promised to more than double that in the next three years. So what does an artist make here? We have an entry level, just graduated from high school, 19 year old artist who's making $50,000 with full healthcare benefits. And then we have fabricators and designers making upwards to seventy or eighty thousand dollars salaried, with full benefits, which is double that if it were in a major urban area, right? I mean, because of costs here. Uh, I would say that these wages, seventy, eighty thousand in Santa Fe, are uh, some of the sweetest that you'll find. Yeah. <laughs> Plus stock in the company, Meow Wolf has become, with more jobs opening up in a newly acquired former Caterpillar assembly plant, for example, to create future exhibits. Finally, there's the gift shop, featuring predictable items and not so predictable, like the experience tube. 
John Fines, Meow Wolf's marketing director. It is a chance for people to actually talk to each other. The original social media, no distractions, no cell phones, just two people. Add up all the revenues, says the CEO, and... We've discovered a uh, business model that is 50 to 60% net profit. If you take in 10 million, you're earning... Five to six on top of it, after all expenses. So who's the lucky investor who gets the payoff? <laughs> we are withholding our profits, we are reinvesting them so that we can build something like this three or four times the size in major cities around the country. So I put the question to a pair of visiting out-of-towners. <laughs> would, would it work in San Diego? I think it would. In Athens? I think it would work in Athens, yes, or Atlanta, yes, I think. And while Meow Wolf isn't exactly Amazon looking to locate a second headquarters, Cad Lubeck says he's received some sweet offers. That we had other cities around the country knocking on the door and saying, not only build one of these in, your, in our city, but we want your entire company to move. The House of Eternal Return's dark story ends in the Infinity Spa, where the CEO summed up the mission. Break down some paradigms, you know, bust through some, to some new dimensions, into a whole different way of thinking about what the state can be and what economy can be in the state. Immersive art as economic engine. Breaking down some paradigms to create jobs. Okay, a few hundred or a drop in the bucket, but hey, think Cirque du Soleil or Disney. They too started out small and weird. Which is what provoked me to sign off this story from inside my favorite item in the gift store. For the PBS NewsHour, this is economics correspondent Paul Salmon, reporting from Meow Wolf's Experience Tube in Santa Fe, New Mexico.